Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Ms. Yogambal Singaram, Ms. Kamini Murdali, Mr. Sipiri Umchuno, Mr. Toki Mohato, Mr. Mavezi Dladla, Mr. Piyush Khandelwal, distinguished guests and online members, welcome to episode one of Long Rhythm, a series of interactions with legendary contributors of South African Indians to cultural history. To commemorate 160 years of the arrival of endangered laborers to South Africa. The year 1860 marks 160 years of Indians arriving to South African shores. Most of these indentured laborers came to South Africa with a better hope and bigger dreams. These people were drawn from agricultural land, labeling class, uh, classes of the UP, Uttar Pradesh, and Bihar regions of Northern India, with comparatively smaller number being recruited from Bengal and various areas in South India. Approximately 85% of the immigrants were Hindus and 14% were Muslims. Today, amongst us, we have renowned artists. And our first artist today to share her experience in this beautiful journey of life is Ms. Yogambal Singaram. Ms. Yogambal Singaram is going to be interviewed by, by Mr. Toki Mohoto. Ms. Yogambal Singaram, also known as Guru Srimati Yogambal Singaram, began her dance career in the year 1963 under Jaya Lakshmi Naidu and graduated in 1970, the first ever to be held in South Africa. She helped tutor students of Jaya Lakshmi Academy. Thereafter, she studied in India under the well-known master Sri M. B. Nagarajan Adhyayar, Adhya if a history of Indian dance in South Africa were to be compiled, then Yogambal Ji's contribution would grace the first chapter of the book. Ms. Yogambal is already a legend of arts of the fraternity, despite holding a full-time position at the Department of Education. She still finds time to promote the art. Together with the help of her family, she always strives towards excellence by setting new goals and standards through her friendly disposition. She became a leader and a champion of the good cause. She will now be interviewed by Mr. Toki Mohato. Mr. Toki Mohato is a resident of Kwamashu in KwaZulu-Natal. He has a passion for community upliftment, advocacy, and marginalized business process engineering, organizational design, and social entrepreneurship. We welcome you all to the interview of Ms. Yogambal Singaram by Mr. Toki Mohato. Thank you so much for the opportunity, as well as this auspicious occasion of interviewing a legend of note. Welcome, Ms. Yogambal Singaram. How do you do today? Yes, good morning. Thank you very much, Toki. It's I'm a pleasure. Well, How do you do today? I am very, very well, thank you. And thank you to the Indian Council at Durban. I feel really humbled by the opportunity of being able to speak this morning. Thank you so much. Without wasting any time, do you mind taking us through the start or beginning of your journey in the dance fraternity, as well as how does it feel to be an honored guest in this occasion? Uh, definitely, I wouldn't call myself an honored guest. I just think I'm like everybody else trying to, to spread culture. I was fortunate enough at the age of seven uh, to be taken to a dance class uh, together with my mother, who saw some inclination of my movement, I think, you know, when we used to have little weddings, I used to run around like as if I was dancing in a movie. And I think she mm -hmm. <laughs> she caught this on and decided to enroll me at a dance class at a very young age. And uh, of course, I used to travel to the city of Durban, then it was extremely safe. As a little girl of about nine, I started at seven, but from the age nine, I was able to get into a bus, get to the class in Beatty Street and back home. 
And I was fortunate enough to learn under a, a remarkable guru, uh, Guru Jayalakshmi Naidu, who is now residing in Canada. And um, she had the utmost faith in all of her students. And we, I had no knowledge of um, any music or dance, really. I came from a totally westernized family. But after having gone to the dance class, I seem to have been a changed person and I enjoyed all that was being taught to me. Great stuff. Can you tell us about your experiences of learning and studying the art form of dance? How well, was I your studied experience? dance initially in Durban and then graduated under my Guru Jay Lakshmi Naidu. I was one of the first graduates in South Africa, or shall we say a first Arangetram to be held at the Tikwani College. And uh, that was many, many years ago. And um, nowadays, of course, we have many, many Arangetrams taking place. But for that, I'm extremely proud that I was one of the first ones where none of this ever took place, but I was able to participate in that. Then thereafter, I, my parents uh, saw a little bit more interest in me, I think, and thought that I didn't want to stop. And I pursued a career in Bharatanatyam in Chennai. And I went up to Chennai, spent many years in Chennai. Initially, of course, it wasn't very easy, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my stay and I would go back anytime. I can, I can almost imagine this could not have been easy during the era of apartheid. Take us through that experience as a young child, as an Indian in South Africa during apartheid with a passion for dance. Actually, my parents were not even aware of apartheid at the time. They were just living merrily in their little communities, you know. And uh, for them, sending me to India was like a, like a kind of prestige, maybe for them. And I was a very young 20-year-old, uh, also not very involved in the, in the politics of the world. But uh, I decided to go along. You know, then whatever our parents said was gospel. So we went along. I thanked my parents for the opportunity of rather having a birthday gift. I would rather go to India. My parents were supposed to have given me a birthday. So I said, no, I would rather pursue a career in dance, which I love so much. Well, studying in India under my guru, M.V. Nagarajan, wasn't very easy because it was a cultural difference, of course. Our lifestyles were very different and uh, being there wasn't so easy. But for the love of the dance, I would prepare to put anything away because that's how much I love dance. And whatever shortcomings that had come by, I was not even interested because my focus was basically going forward in dance. So the apartheid factor didn't help, uh, you know, worry me too much. But when I had the problem was when I had an Arangetram and I had no idea that my guru had chosen a venue, the Soviet embassy, which is a Russian embassy. And there was a whole lot of issues about that and I got written to and um, my parents didn't know what to say because they didn't know how to handle the situation and my guru said don't worry I'll handle the situation and he said you know this is art don't mix it with politics yes. and I continued having my arangetram there and then I had a problem when I got back home at the airport where I had to show my documentation and they said you know you must sit into this little room because you've gone and studied at this time here which you are not supposed to do and you have now come back and you have to wait. There was a bit of questioning happening and still very dull to the emotion. I was still very excited about having achieved a little bit of something, coming home to see my parents after so many years. So that's basically how it was. I think it didn't affect me too much then. But of course, later on, I realized what I had been through. If, if you were to reflect back during the time when you were not too aware of the area that you lived in, juxtaposing that against the passion you had for art, what do you feel were qualities that allowed you to survive through those uh, excuse me, tumultuous times? Actually, I think the, the love of my parents and the qualities that my parents have inculcated in me, I think those were the things. And the fact that my parents trusted me at such a young age and gave me those wings to fly, I basically traveled to India on my own, set wow. up, set up a, a, found a teacher on my own, set up accommodation on my own, had an arangetram on my own. And I think the motivation, I had a mother who was 
absolutely amazing. She grew us up as girls to say, you must get out in the world and fend for yourself. And it wasn't easy in those times for mothers to, to trust their girls to go along to India. But she, has to, she had total faith. And with that faith, I think I was able to, to say, right, I must do justice to my mother and my father before anything else, complete my course, come back with a whole lot of respect back to them as the child that I went from here. Wow, wonderful lessons. And tell me, how much of your mother's influence has translated into how you conduct yourself as an educator, as well as a renowned dance instructor? Toki, I must say, I'm the split image of my mother. <laughs> I do everything. I speak like her. I talk like her. I dress like her. I'm even very strict like her. <laughs> So I am my mother, and uh, if you know other members of my family, you ask them, they will say, you are your mother. We have your mother in our family back again. Yes, Definitely. yes. <laughs> and, and also, it, it's quite important when you mention the role of women in the, I wouldn't say politics of resistance, but protecting creativity or creative arts. What role do you feel yourself as a woman or women generally have to play in protecting creativity and creative arts? Well, first of all, again, I will say thank you to my mother. You know, a great big thank you to her for trusting in me. And those qualities that she imbibed in me was what made me go forth into the world and not be afraid of anything. Mm. I was happy to go out there, not afraid of the white man, the black man, the colored man the Indian man, anybody. I felt that I had the wings to fly. And that only could come from one space, and, and that was my mother. And I would like to recite a very quick incident. Uh, my husband is late now, 10 years. And um, I want to say that the dance career in my life, having spent so much of time in India and being on my own, had given me qualities of how to manage life on my own. Although my husband is not here, I'm able to keep house, keep my family, keep my grandchildren, continue with, with cultural work, social work. That's what keeps me going. I'm not sitting back in a little corner and saying to myself, I'm going to cry now because he's not here. But I've said to myself, I've got enough energy with the help of God. I will pursue this career until I die. And I think I still have some energy and with the help of God, I will definitely continue. Definitely. What do you feel keeps you going? Your source of inspiration, both during times of apartheid or even today, as you rightfully state, condolences to your late husband, to, to you for your late husband. What do you feel allows you to still continue to be inspired and still be as passionate as you are? Actually, uh, my children, I, I have two daughters and uh, they give me absolute encouragement. Uh, to continue with the art form, this is mom, you will have to go forth and continue for yourself. All of us are different persons, but mm -hmm. each person needs to do it for, their self, for themselves, and we will be there to support you in whatever you do. And I'm grateful to them, and I'm also grateful to my students who have made me who I am today. I will definitely say my students and the parents of my students who have sat by me through my trying times in my life in the last 10 years. And there was a word that one of the parents said to me one day. She says, mm -hmm. Yogampa, you, you must go forth and do the work that you need to do because we need you still. And that particular line stuck in my mind. And I said, yes, there is somebody else that also needs me. Why should I curl up and sit back when I have a little bit of knowledge about dance? I need to spread it and spread it to my communities and other communities as well. Definitely. I, I, I have a sense that to you, art or creativity isn't just about a passion, but it's more also of a form of therapy that you impart both to your student and your family. Share experiences where you felt that art is indeed therapy. Actually, when I get into a dance class, I'm so emotionally charged, you would not even believe it. I would be in another state of mind, leaving home, of course. But the moment I get into my dance class and I see my children and we all begin with prayer, and during the prayer session, all of us become so emotionally aware 
And in that space, we are able to exchange something that I really can't explain to somebody, but I feel so elevated during that period because we begin, of course, with yoga in the class, and that alone relaxes us. Every class mm -hmm. begins with yoga, and the children themselves become so disciplined. And Bharatanatyam, I must say, is a very, very disciplined form of art. And that discipline permeates through my students, even still through myself, which I carry forth even to the parents. And I allow parents to come to the class and partake of this. And Bharatanatyam is definitely a spiritual experience in that time. But for me, I carry this home as well. Because in my home, on my own, I'm still sitting and practicing. And during those times, I really feel emotionally charged. Definitely. Please specify more or give us more detail in terms of the genre of art that you do and how much connection do you feel that has with spirituality? Okay, the genre of dance I do is classical dance or Bharatanatyam as it is called and known by everybody. It is a very um, structured form of dance where it takes you through from the basic movements to up to a, it's called a, um, it's like a temple basically. You start yes, yes. with an Ataripu and then you come on to the Jadiswaram and then you come on to the onto the Padams and then you come onto a Tilana. By entering a form of dance like this is like you are entering a temple. And all forms of Bharatanatyam is a devotional art form. Every piece that you form is dedicated to the gurus or to the gods above. So in the process of um, dedicating your dance uh, to our gurus or to the gods, we learn to become better souls in our lives. Mm. And also inform us in terms of the role that artists have in one creating a culturally cohesive and diverse society, but most importantly, connecting us with our maker. How much influence or role does art play in that sense? I think art is one of the greatest means of transport to connect everybody on this world. Because even if you go into a restaurant and if somebody just taps the fingers on the table, you know, somebody is feeling some music within them. Yeah. So when you go to a, to a, to a program, or be it a, a cultural program, to a wedding evening, you find that everybody is coming together. Imagine a program or a, an evening where, the, say, the bride and the bridegroom are sitting on stage and there is no music and everybody is chatting. <laughs> what happens? It's the music and the art form is something that connects everybody throughout the world. I don't think there's anything else that connects everybody because it connects you through your heart. Yes. Music is felt in your heart and it connects you from your heart, definitely. And if you are connected and if you have a good heart, you will connect everybody around you. They will be attracted to you through the art form. I feel I've made many connections in my life through art and i'm grateful Most definitely and also just maybe my last two questions before we close given the sense that you obviously are aging gracefully and i'm certain you've got young ones that you impart this knowledge onto how much uh, how much response is there or interest from the young ones and do you feel a sense of them carrying the tradition throughout the ages and also imparting it to the next generation Yes, now we come to a crossroads, actually. <laughs> we find <laughs> with Bharatanatyam, because it is so highly structured and yes, yes. requires so much more discipline and practice, you find that the interest is not as good as if I had to go and do Bollywood, for example. They, they love that because they, they love the spins, the beautiful costumes and the running around. It doesn't get so very involved. But with Bharatanatyam, yes, yes. It is deeply and highly evolved. So they're not too keen. They would think, oh, what is this Carnatic classical music these people are singing? It's boring. It's like, you know, like, uh, like opera music. You would tell the kids today now, I want you to listen to opera. No, they don't want to. Why are they screeching at the top of their voice? So Bharatanatyam is not, I wouldn't say dying, but those people who have gone and made a reading and an understanding of classical music and dance, they would appreciate Bharatanatyam definitely. But for me, I am not about uh, finding a hundred students in my class. If mm -hmm. I find five good students in my class who have interest, who have love, who have discipline, I am prepared to go. 
because this is not an art form for the masses. Definitely. I love the distinction you draw between quality and quantity. Yes. Do you feel a sense of responsibility as an artist in perhaps ensuring that we, as people who evolve in society, do understand the connection between art and spirituality, but most importantly, also protect the tradition of classical music or dance? Definitely. I think that a person should be getting involved in uh, cultural work. And by getting involved in cultural work, you will find that your passion for music, for dance, flows through there. And as a result, you'll find that our people are wanting to learn and are becoming interested, they're becoming keen. What do you do? You know, how do you do this? And uh, this kind of thing, I think that should make a, a, a great person. Because not only doing, you go to school and you come back, you eat and you do your homework. No, that's not enough. You should extend yourself into the world. Do something else, do some charity work, do some cultural work, set up some children, get them together. Don't let them be on the streets doing drugs. Come in, do some cultural work. That will lay a grand foundation for you to become a good human being. Most definitely. And lastly, do you find a sense of fulfillment? Do you ever sit down and say, my part has been played, my journey is now finished, and I've contributed so much in the Indian cultural history, or do you feel that there's still yet to be done? Oh, I think I could never be fulfilled. <laughs> uh, what I've done is basically uh, just the tip of the ocean. I've tried my very best. And um, no, 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 definitely, I won't say fully fulfilled. I feel there's a whole lot more to be done. And there's a lot of learning on my part still to be done. And I'm still going through a process. If God allows me to live on this earth a little bit longer, definitely, I will keep going at this and opening up new avenues to check what else can I do in the art form to make it more interesting and appealing to everybody. Thank you so much. I'm certain everyone who's going to be listening in on our interview would definitely deduce as much energy, as much wisdom, insight, as well as I have. Thank you for teaching me so much. And I'm certain through the long rhythm, you're still going to contribute so much more in our lives, the history of Indians in South Africa, but most importantly, the creative arts in its entirety. Thank you, Toki. Thank you very, very much. And thank you once again to the Indian Consulate Durban and Shristi and all other persons that are involved with this program. My greatest amount of respect to you all, Dr. Yogi. A great big thank you. Namaskaram. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Ms. Yogambal and Ms. Toki. Those were indeed very profound remarks by Ms. Uh, Yogambal. Thank you, ma'am, for keeping Indian history and culture alive today amongst us youth and everybody. Our next guest uh, speaker is Ms. Kamini Mudli, and she will be interviewed by Ms. Mavezi Dladla. Kamini Ji started her music career at a very young age under the guidance of the late MC Naidu and the late Gopalan Governor. She undertook a formal training for a year under the late Kista Governor. Kamini Ji was awarded a scholarship under the auspicious of the NTVS from the Sterling Group Chennai, where she undertook classes for four months under the guidance of Srimati Sita Rajan in Chennai, where she learned the method of voice training. She is the director of the Multicultural Academy of South Africa, which launched in the year 2001. Kamini is a versatile singer and sings in many languages, such as Tamil, Telugu, and Hindi. Our interviewer, Ms. Mavezi Dladla, is the nominee for the Iswi Is Youth Awards for 2015, a PMB Gymnastic Club qualified coach and gymnast, the SA Platinum and Gold Medalist for 2015, and obtained a scholarship at the New York Film Academy in 2016. We now welcome Ms. Kamini Mudili and Ms. Mavezi Dladla for their very interesting interview today. A warm welcome to you, Ms. Kamaniji. 
Um, it is such an honor to be interviewing one of the contributors in South African Indian cultural history. Well, Ms. Kamani, uh, Kamani Mudli, please share on the beginning of your journey for the love of Tamil, Telugu, and Hindu music. Okay, um, let me start right at the beginning. My journey started at the age of eight. Um, I was fortunate to be uh, amongst people that mentored me and actually gave me direction into uh, the genre of music is devotional, um, uh, sacred music, as and then later on branched off into Carnatic music. Um, I think I, I'd, uh, it's 50 years now and I'd never ever want to stop doing this and I think uh, it's it's actually just not going ahead and just learning music but it's done a lot in my life and I'd never want to change that for anything in the world so if you want yes thanks yes um do you feel like um your, your journey of um of of music is spiritually inclined or devoted through your practice performance and teaching of music well, I think as a teacher, um, yes, when I was younger, we had to practice a lot. Um, besides going to school um, and uh, the other, other times that we were free was engaged in music uh, with my mentor, late Mr. N.C. Naidu and late Gopal and Gavandal, uh, was quite hard on me and those days, uh, even we, our parents could never even, you know, say anything because uh, we were directly under our gurus. So I do not regret uh, the hard times we had. But uh, in saying that, they motivated me a lot, empowered me. And I think as time went on, all the learning and spending uh, all the times with them and uh, even um, as much as getting, you know, like really uh, being hard on me, um, then I realized, you know, I uh, went into opening my own academy, the Multicultural Academy of South Africa, which was launched in 2001. Um, and um, I actually do the same to my students. Um, you will, if you had to obviously listen to them, uh, they're going in the same uh, route that I've taken, the, the difficult route and not the easy route. I believe that music is, um, you know, it's like elementary when you're going to school, you have to start off right at the bottom and then actually you achieve the best, uh, you know, I I knowing everything, the in and out of music. So um, obviously our school is there mainly to encourage Carnatic music. Um, and I think as you asked me, uh, you know, uh, what uh, the, 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 the experience and stuff that I have, is that I gain more experience by teaching the students because I think as a tutor you learn more being with your students because you yourself have to be abreast and know things before you can even teach them. So um, yeah, I'm fortunate that we have uh, good students and parents that also I think are also my inspiration as well. That's awesome. I was about to ask what really motivates you to continue your journey of music? I know it's it's not that easy, but there is that thing that pulls you closer to it each and every time. So what is it that really okay. inspires you and makes you wake up every day and be like, this is exactly what I want to do? Okay, uh, there are a few things. Um, I think firstly, it's God and my devotion to my Bhagwan, that's Sri Satya Sai Baba. Um, you know, being diagnosed with cancer. Uh, the thyroid having uh, two operations and was told that I would never have any voice. Um, and that was proven wrong to many people because um, I think your devotion and your love and the type of music that we do, the spiritual music, is not just singing. It, it sort of gets deep into you. And so when I sing or whenever I, I'm on a platform or wherever, you have this conversation with God. Um, I'm not sure if anybody will really, some people may feel this, whatever you do, you can connect to music. Uh, I, um, I then uh, decided to sing on a Shivaratri night and I cried because I didn't have any voice. It was gone five months after my op and I realized there was no voice. 
And I went to Shivaratri at one of the Sai organizations and I cried and I sang. And then I had to go to uh, Prashanti and there I was blessed and I was given my voice and I did my first Sai CD there. And so you may ask me why I am saying, you know, uh, this is something that I believe is deep within myself. Music is spiritual. Um, you know, there's so much to music because um, this is ancient music. Ancient music, uh, it, it just, it, it does something to one within, you know, yourself. And um, I believe that's one of my reasons why I would go on and I would, I did a program on Sunday Sadhana and I was surprised that so many people didn't want to sing after that, but they've come out of the closet and they started going back into music after listening to what happened to me, diagnosed with cancer twice, radiation and still going strong and um, motivating the youth. Um, you know, uh, music is uh, very therapeutic. We say nada, yoga and rasa. It's from the backbone of the ancient system of music. We are celebrating the, uh, the indentured laborers. And I think our thanks go out to them because um, they, uh, they persevered, they still continued. I mean, obviously there was different art forms where they, they sang storytelling story and things, but they, they stuck to the raga, which maybe they didn't know then. So actually we uh, actually continuing with their tradition. And like I said, it's very therapeutic. It's very spiritual. And uh, I think it, it creates energy within you. So um, that, uh, that was uh, my motivation. And then also it's the students that also I get inspired by because they are actually the ones that inspire me as well. That's very lovely and motivational and also painful at the same time. But it shows that you are such a strong woman and your contribution can actually be seen. So like with all the things that you've been through, like how does it help you to teach young people that you educate about um, like music? How do you help them like um, get um, that motivation that you have through music and also like become strong and understand that music can be therapeutic to their lives and also they can teach the next people in their lives to become stronger? I'm, I'm glad you asked me this question. And if I may add that, I'm so fortunate that I have a husband who supports me in fully in what I do. And I think he's also my driving force together with my sons, my family, who's always been there to support me and push me along. So when you're coming back to how I would actually, um, you know, for me, this is the legacy that I want to leave behind in our youth. And um, so I've networked with, with my guru in India. So um, they are fortunate in that, that the students actually have training every Saturday morning. Well, it was before the lockdown. I've arranged with my guru's senior students who have their doctorate in music to have a lesson with my students, teaching them. They have a set syllabus, which they actually uh, use, um, learning the, the technical aspect as well. So theory is very important music because I believe that they should be able to compose one day. Uh, yes, when we were young, we learned from uh, CDs and, uh, you know, we had to listen and learn, but we had, didn't know better. So I feel that I, I had a scholarship. I went to India while I was working at the education department. Uh, due to limited leave, I was able to just uh, go for a limited time, but um, I actually learned the technique of voice training and um, hence my guru is assisting all my students. And uh, they've been entering in, during the lockdown in global, global uh, live streaming concerts with uh, people in Chennai, Mumbai, uh, LA, and throughout the world. And they've come first. You know, it was amazing for me. And the judges were global as well. So for me, that's an achievement. And like I said, is for me to leave a legacy in my students. So they continue to teach this. And that is why I emphasize on them teaching. And going one step further is my guru is going to arrange for them to have get their degree in music and maybe get the honors and the master and the doctorate as well. So that's a lot of work, but I enjoy doing it, yes. That is wonderful. Do you feel satisfied or fulfilled out of your journey of contribution to South African Indian cultural history? 
as a person who has achieved so much through your scholarships and getting all the knowledge that you have acquired, you think you have um, contributed to the South African Indian cultural history? Yes, I do very much. Uh, we've actually come a long way in that, uh, you know, it um, uh, participated in, you know, giving recognition to uh, our forefathers um, when there was events held, uh, the Durban Diwali, the Natal Tamil Vedic Society, I stayed for the Andhra Mahasabha, the Hindu Mahasabha. So, uh, yes, I've contributed for years and years and years, and um, we still do, and I allow the children to do as well. Um, so I, I just believe that there's no end to it, and um, we had days, I, I know that, you know, people may think that, uh, you, you know, uh, I believe that I should be able to sing in, in lots of uh, uh, different vernaculars, like, Obviously, we have students in North Indian, South Indian, um, you know, uh, as well. So basic knowledge of music is generally used first, to, and it's it's a, it's just the language that we, you know, have a difference with. But uh, uh, that's why it's multicultural academy. We uh, also went as far out as having traditional Zulu, uh, you know, artists as well in some of our events at uh, when we did our launch at the Royal Hotel. So I believe that music has no barriers, and uh, it doesn't um, it doesn't allow any discrimination. It's just about love and unity, and that is why uh, I I always believe our students, as much as they're learning Carnatic music, should go out there and be able to fit in uh, other genres as well as, but in keeping in mind that this is your main focus. Yes. So speaking of unity, like you said, please uh, share on your experiences uh, during your practice performance during the apartheid area and the time after apartheid. How how has everything worked out during the, the time okay. back then and the time now? Okay, I have, uh, I, I think I have great memories, although it was during the apartheid time, we were fortunate that we participated uh the KZN Arts Festival, we had the Elizabeth Snaden Theatre, the Harry Oppenheimer. And you know, it uh, it may sound strange, but we were allowed to participate and work side by side and collaborate with uh various artists in different genres of music. I think music is something that brought about unity and uh there was music in the park that we took part in, the likes of late Jagadish and Deva who put this together and uh, others as well outside the playhouse, whether it was uh, the Zulu or Indian or where it was, it was any other race. We all were together. I think music was great because we didn't, I didn't really experience that and up until now we still do the same. So it didn't really affect, uh, for me, it didn't affect me at all. We didn't have any, we always participated together. That is so lovely. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your knowledge and for being the best legendary uh, to be with us. And uh, we appreciate you so much. Please continue with your great work. And uh, most like young people are still going to learn a lot. And I'm also willing to learn a lot from you through music. And oh. so lovely. Thank you so much. Great. Lovely. Maybe it's good. I always believe that in exchanging and learning together. And at this juncture, I'd like to thank the Indian Consulate for hosting this, uh, you, you know, still celebrating and uh, living, uh, still, you know, uh, re remembering our indentured laborers that came. It was no easy task for them to be here. And I'd like to uh, say to the Indian concert, it's good that they still continue, you know, to um, have these, uh, obviously, this because of the lockdown we have this, but I know they've already always uh, assisted in, in helping promote the arts. I talk for myself as well. I'd like to thank them from my bottom of my heart for assisting even the Multicultural Academy when I hosted artists. I'd like to say to Dr. Yogi, Shusti, and the rest of you, Thank you so much for all your assistance. And I'd like to, in closing, um, you know, close with 
great Mahatma Gandhi. And, you know, he was somebody that we should remember, obviously, um, you know, who was a great person and was so determined in what he did. And obviously non-violence, but still managed to get where he was. So um, I'm just going to sing two lines of uh, the beautiful song Vaishnava Janato. <clears throat> वैष्णव जन तो केने कहिए जे पीड़ पर आए अनेरे वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए जे पीड़ पर आए जाने रे परतु के उप कौर करे तो ये परतु के उप कर करे तो ये मन अभिमान न आने रे वैष्णव जन तो तेरे कहे Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wish you all the best as well to the Indian consulate. May they continue with their good work. Thank you to you as well. You um, may, may, we may meet once the lockdown is over with the Indian consulate as well. Thank you to Shrishti and Piyush as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kami. And Maveziji, ji, those were very deep words indeed, Kamini ji. I mean, your experience has definitely taught us something and your journey. I mean, from having cancer to being so inspiring and motivating, not just to youth, but everybody out there. And that rendition of Vaishnava Janato was indeed very beautiful. Thank you as well, Maveziji. ji. We look forward to uh, working with you in the near future as well. We've come to the conclusion and we'll have vote of thanks by Mr. Sipiwe and Chunam. Namaskar. Swami Vivekananda Center. It gives me a great pleasure today to <clears throat> take part on this wonderful program, which is called A Long Rhythm. Please allow me to thank this young Abals Yukambal Singaramji for enlightening us for about his contribution because she is one of the legendary contributors to the South African Indian culture. So we'd like to thank also Miss Kamini Moodley, and she is also one of the legendary contributors to the South African Indian history. And also allow me to thank Mr. Toki Mohati for giving us a great interview to Miss Yogambal Singaram. And also, I'd like to thank Miss Mavezi Chambega Zaminiji for also conducting a stunning interview to Miss Kamini Mudiji. Allow me also to thank Dr. Prakash Chaitana Yogi, Director SVCC. Lastly, my colleague Sristi Harinarayan, and also our technical support. Mr. Sri Piyush Kandedwalji. Thank you, sir. You did a great job on our technical support. To all our online viewers, we are so grateful to you. We are so grateful for taking part on today's event. We really appreciate you. We are really so thankful for what you have uh, doing today for attending our programs. So to all of you, I am thank you. Have a good day. Namaskar.